Hi, folks. Kiltman here again. Yes. Kiltman and his best buddy, Hellboy. Yeah. With the red right hand of doom. <laughs> so, now a little while ago, I did post a video regarding the new Hellboy adaptation, directed by Neil Marshall and starring David Harbour of uh, Stranger Things, playing Hellboy. And this was been put back it's coming out April the 12th 2019 I discussed my thoughts about it at length you know previously we were still awaiting the official trailer a trailer had been leaked from San Diego footage and all this and I gave my verdict on the very rough cut that I saw of that and there was I basically couldn't give an opinion really but I was tentatively looking forward to it anyway Lionsgate finally dropped its official teaser today <laughs> and I've watched it that many times possibly even more and I still can't make up my mind oh Jesus Christ you know why is it that things that you're really into you struggle to get you know to find that hook to find that thing that makes it really gel with you. This is the thing about being passionate about characters and franchises. I've got all the Hellboy comic books. I'm a massive fan of uh, Hellboy's creator, Mike Mignola. And Mike Mignola actually has the... Uh, he's given the seal of approval to this version, this adaptation. And Neil Marshall is a great director. He was... I did cite him previously as the great British hope of horror with Dog Soldiers and The Descent, you know, fantastic movies. <laughs> and then, of course, he did Doomsday, which was a complete clusterfuck of a film. It's got its fans, but I am not one of them. And he did a couple of episodes of Game of Thrones. He also did the, um, the action-packed, cheapskate, gladiator rip-off, Centurion, <laughs> which is great fun, and I enjoy that. So he's tackled genres, he's tackled historical epics, he's tackled horror, he's tackled action and madcap apocalyptic stuff. So all of that, all of that, plus Game of Thrones, does massively zoom into the Hellboy mythos. You know, a demon who fights for mankind against other demons. His hand, this stone hand of doom, the right hand of doom, can unlock the creatures that will bring about the apocalypse because he is his destiny is to bring about the end of mankind and of course he doesn't want to do that he fights against his destiny and he fights for the humans with the BPRD the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense under Professor Broom who is his adopted human father or more like grandfatherly figure uh, who was played by John Hurt in the original Guillermo del Toro original movies and is actually played by Ian McShane yeah the great Ian McShane whose spectacular new lease of cinematic life is just un almost unparalleled you know this was this was TV's love joy for God's sake and now he's he's in the John Wick franchise he was in Gods and Monsters with the Neil Gaiman adaptation of his novel and uh, what else is he in? Well, Deadwood, you know, Al Swearingen, you know, who's got the most apt name because this guy cannot stop swearing. And he's also going to be in the movie version of Deadwood. So, you know, he knows no bounds. Whether he suits the role as Professor Broom, I don't know. I don't know. In the comic books, he's an old guy. And in the original uh, Hellboy movies from Guillermo del Toro with Ron Perlman as the big titular. Big Red. Uh, I, I loved John Hurt's portrayal. From what I see in this trailer now, which has just dropped today, um, Ian McShane, I don't get who he really is in it. But anyway, let's get on to this trailer. Now, we were promised uh, a much darker, more sinister, certainly more violent and uh, R-rated version of Hellboy more akin to Mike Mignola's original comic books, of which this story, The Rise of the Blood Queen, is actually, don't fall over you, don't fall over, is actually an adaptation of The Wild Hunt 
and what's it called again? The Storm and the Fury. <laughs> uh, featuring Hellboy's original background as being the rightful heir to being King of Britain, basically. Because he is uh, a bastard offspring of you know, King Arthur. <laughs> King Arthur's liaison with his own sister, which causes Mordred, and then he's an offspring of Mordred. Anyway, anyway, yeah. It's, he's part of the King Arthur lineage, and he does wield Excalibur in the books and in this film. Because in the trailer, you will see Excalibur, the sword in the stone. Hellboy can wield that, and you'll see it flaming. And you know, it's a fantastic image. So they clearly are using that storyline. And Nimue, who is the uh, the Blood Queen, she will rise up. Hellboy has the ability, being the King of Britain, to bring forth an army of England's old noble knights. So all these undead, well, they're dead, but they can rise from their tombs and their crypts from all over the British Isles. You know, these old fantastic knights in shining armour and heroes of legend and myth and yore can all be at Hellboy's beck and call to lead the last good fight. All sounds very exciting. But looking at this trailer, David Harbour from Stranger Things uh, adopts the Ron Perlman look of Hellboy, i.e. The, the bloody big jacket, uh, the, the muscle vest and the boots so no cloven hooves as in the comics I know it'd be difficult to do that it'd be, it'd be a heavily CGI laden movie if you're going to have to take out David Harbour's legs every time and put these little spindly goat legs and cloven hooves on him but it would be great to see because that's how he looks in the books so we've got the big boots like them big clodhoppers big gothic mosh boots you know <laughs> um, we see the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, which is this gun. This gun. We, we see it being given to Hellboy, being bestowed upon him. And this is like, you know, he says in the in, in the in the trailer, you know, some most kids get Lego sets for Christmas. I get this, and it's a fucking big gun like uh, which has got super fantastic supernatural bullets which can take out demons. And speaking of demons, we will see several demons. We will see an, an apocalyptic vision of London with uh, river Thames of lava, burning buildings everywhere. Almost like, remember the, the Keanu Reeves film, uh, the adaptation of the comic book Constantine? A very sort of hellish depiction, very similar to what you saw in that movie. And you see this weird dragon, you know, spindly, you know, dragon flying across this hellish landscape. All looks very demonic and, you know, splendidly visual. Uh, you will see, sadly, Far too much comedy. Um, this is the thing. This is what's going to get everyone because what's been touted as being darker, more satanic, more violent doesn't appear to be the case from this trailer. What are they going for here? There's far too much comedy. The opening scenes on the steps of St. Paul's Cathedral, which has been featured in a lot of films lately, it was in Skyfall, it was in um, London Has Fallen. And it looks like a very similar scene to London's Fallen, i.e. there's loads of bodies all over the front steps, there's police cars everywhere, and Hellboy gets out of the vehicle, and some armed copper poosh, shoots at him, and he goes, I'm on your side! And, and the cop goes, my bad, ah, oh, fuck off. No, seriously, fuck off. That's just shit. And then you've got, they go to some secret headquarters, again in London, and uh, behind the Obviously, the the woman who's like in charge of it, but is under the guise of a shop proprietor. I think it's a cafe or something, a coffee bar or whatever. She's from EastEnders. I don't watch EastEnders, but you guys will know who this woman is. She's dead recognisable, but I don't know the character she plays. I just know she's from EastEnders. And she's a wizened old hag. You see her with a gun. But she says to Hellboy, have you got any ID? And he goes, do I look like I need ID? You know, look at me, I'm fucking eight feet tall and bright red. I've got these shaved down horns, like this big fucking stone fist, you know, for Christ's sake. Um, so let's try to get some kind of perspective on where we're going with this trailer. Because it clearly is the Wild Hunt. Uh, we have the pig man, Nimue's 
pig man um, sort of sidekick and he has a bit of a you can see there's certainly a few scraps he has with um, with Hellboy and yeah he, he looks good he looks good now if I remember rightly that's Stephen Graham Scouser Stephen Graham who's made a bit of a name for himself in Hollywood and Tinseltown um, he portrays um, I forget the name of the character uh, Grimald 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 something Grimald Grimald something Pigman let's just call him Pigman for Christ's sake uh, we see Hellboy battling giants in some mythical field and getting hoofed miles away looks like he's taken down one or two of them already there that's from the comics that's there we see some really weird um, skyscraper tall um, sword handed demon with a kind of cleaved weird eyeless face scything something in half in, in midair and he's towering above these buildings uh, there's a bat like creature with wings and all this I have no idea who that one is I don't recognize him or the, the, the sword handed thing from um, the comics or that it could be just movie interpretations of characters that are in the books uh, Mila Hovich plays Nimue, the Blood Queen, and you'll see her towards the end of the trailer. And like Hellboy says something, he, he arrives and says like, "What? Am I interrupting something?" And she'll go like, "Actually, you're just in time," because we know she needs him to do certain things. It's all part of the prophecy. Uh, but Mila Hovich. Yeah, Resident Evil and various other bloody movies and that, like, and you know, the fifth element. Uh, is she a good actress? No. No, she's not a good actress at all. Can she play a type in fantasy movies? Well, certainly, yeah. Can she move? Can she play this sort of feisty, you know, a bitch who's actually an anniversary for a big, you know, eight foot tall, muscle bound red guy? Yeah, yeah, she could probably do that. But line delivery, no. Screen persona, no, no. So that's a bit of a letdown. And I had my sort of doubts about it initially, but now seeing it properly in this teaser, sadly I'm now thinking, oh fuck, you know, you, you, you've wasted this. So again, we've addressed the tone appears to be all over the place. For what was meant to be a dark, satanic, more horrific version, more in adherence to the original comic books. Which, by the way, they, they feature lots of sorcery, necromancy and black magic and the occult. Lots of death and carnage. But there is a deafness and lightness of tone in the dialogue. Most particularly with Hellboy himself. who is a laconic, you know, sort of laid back, forever reluctant, forever like hard, hard done to, you know, anti-hero. So, so that, that, that comes across in the trailer as well. So they've adapted that pretty well. I can give that, you know, kudos there. But the tone of the film from this trailer does appear to be far too jokey, far too light-hearted. Uh, now, that flies in the face of what was originally said. Now, we know that the film was test screened last, not last year, this year. We haven't reached, we haven't reached 2019 yet. We're still hanging on to the cusp of 2018. But it was test screened badly. It did not meet with anyone's approval. So it got put back. Its release date was originally January. Now it's April the 12th. Okay, so Lionsgate have took the film back. Clearly to do some reworking on it. That, that's not unusual. It happens a lot. Apparently it was test... Another version was test screened again only recently. And it met with some, you know positive you know approval great that, that is great stuff yeah so i you know i'm tentatively you know still optimistic about this because i love the character and i want to see it done right i've said before that i wish to god guillermo del toro had had the chance to do his hellboy 3 with ron perlman and abe sapien and liz sherman and all of the, the crew that we had from the first two films because i love those and I don't care what anyone says, you know, oh, but they weren't Mike Mignola's. Oh, fuck off. They were bloody damn close to what... I've read all the books, and they captured the tone of Mike Mignola's stories. They they went off and created a bit more of their own little universe, but the character was spot on. I loved it. I loved the sense of humour. 
Yes, it, the violence was slightly watered down, but they were action packed and still quite brutal. What do you want? This version does not seem to be any more brutal. There's a couple of headshots in it. <coughs> I, weirdly, I develop a cough on these videos. Why is that? Maybe I'm drinking too much decaffeinated tea. Or is it whiskey? Who knows? I had some earlier. <laughs> to get myself in the mood for Big Red, you know? Uh, well, what else are we gonna go with this? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That is all the stuff I was gonna mention. Because I've been looking forward to this, I've been looking forward to this trailer dropping, and even though it's only a teaser, uh, oh, I know what I was gonna say. And it's really in its favor as well. There is a great, great shot right at the very end of Hellboy with the horns fully grown rising up topless out of a well some satanic looking stone well rising up he has the flaming crown hovering above his head simmering away he has excalibur in his hand on fire he rises up not looking too happy and that is a great image they also they've cut this trailer now this may be a divider for some people but they've cut it to billy idol's version of moni moni now, I love his version of Moni Moni, and for me, that worked. So do you see what I mean? You're getting this bizarre thing. Some visuals look great, some dialogue sounds funny, some reaction looks okay. The music to it, it's cut to a, a soundtrack, it's to a song that I love, and it seems to conjure up a jokey, light-hearted, jovial sort of take the piss sort of mood and tone. But that flies in the face of what the film's supposed to be like. Then you've got these bizarre sort of side characters who are not like they are in the comics. <coughs> Alice is not like she is in the, uh, you know, the Wild Hunt and the Storm and the Fury. She's a kick-ass broad by the looks of things. Doesn't look like her counterpart in the comics. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, what else was I going to go with this? What else was I going to say? There was more to this. Yes, I know. Ah, bloody Hellboy himself. <sighs> what is it with the makeup? It doesn't look right. Now I've seen the trailer properly. I I'd seen images of the new Hellboy and I liked it. Static posters, I liked them. I saw a version of this trailer earlier, but it was a really grainy, poor sound version on a slant as well, like. And I thought, no, no, they've nailed it. They've got it right. That, that's Hellboy. That's how it should be. But looking at him now, in crystal clarity, what the hell have they done to his face? He has longer hair. Don't mind that so much. He has a bit of a man bun at the back. Yeah, and well, he does in the books. That, that's okay. I don't mind that. But his face seems to be... It, it's, it's cut in. It's hollowed in. And I don't like it. It, it, doesn't, it does not look right. He looks odd. Odd. <laughs> he's a he's a big demon with fucking ground down horns, a big stone hand, a massive long duster leather jacket. <laughs> and his face looks slightly wrong to me. <laughs> he has these sort of crazy sort of uh, feral lynx like eyes, which are fabulous. But it's just his face just does not seem to to work. I know the guy's put the uh, the hours in, in the gym and then he's put the body suit on. I did discuss this in the previous video that he worked out like crazy to get down that fat beer belly and his slobby shoulders to get more defined and more bulk that was actually muscle. But you're not seeing what he actually did to get that shape because he's actually encased in a fucking muscle suit as well. But he had to put the weight on and get the definition to fit the suit so it wear properly. So hats off to the guy for doing all that. That gets a bit, well, it gets two thumbs up. Anyone who can change their physique for a role, I totally, totally <coughs> applaud. Especially when you're a fat beer sweating, you know, chain smoking you know, slob, <laughs> which he was. And probably will be again. But, um, so 
I agree with he, he looks the part body wise but facially I'm not fussed on the way they put the prosthetics on there the appearance doesn't seem right to me so story wise I, I like the story I hope they adhere to it correctly and do it justice I've heard people say the film looks low budget I don't know, I, I, I don't, it doesn't smack, it doesn't scream, oh we couldn't afford this with the scrimp and save here. The locations look good, uh, the fight in the fields with the giants looks good, the big monsters look okay, you know, the effects look alright. Uh, you know, you're not seeing a great deal of what's going to happen in this movie, you're seeing, you know, brush strokes, uh, a sort of overview of the carnage and the battles that are going to happen. But my problems with it are that the tone seems to be far too comical for what they said it was going to be. Um, you have poor, a, a poor actress playing the main antagonist. Uh, Ian McShane doesn't really strike the right note as Professor Broom. So, I don't know, I don't know. April 12th, we're all going to find out for sure. <laughs> So, I mean, Hellboy, you guys out there, do you even know who Hellboy is? You've heard me talk about him, and I'm a massive, massive fan of this guy. I love him, and to see him done right would be a real, real, you know, absolute, you know, it'd be a diamond. Um, Guillermo del Toro, with his two Ron Pelman movies, did do things 75% spot on, and then he added and took away as Galeo Motoro would, would do because you know that that's he's creating his own mythos as well and it worked as far as I'm concerned and I really really wanted to see what happened with Hellboy 3. I've seen some people go like well this just looks like Hellboy 3 because tonally it's just the same it's a comic book fantasy movie you know it doesn't take itself too seriously it's kind of sending up its laid-back laconic hero Um well I don't know, it seems to be a partial, well it is a reboot, it's definitely a reboot, but what we're not getting is the origin story. It looks like there's a flashback to his origins, a flashback there, and uh, to his Nazi, the, where the Nazis brought him into this world. There's certainly a bit of imagery from that, uh, which you saw in the first Hellboy movie, uh, with, from Guillermo del Toro, and you know, that, that might be necessary to bring a new audience on board. So I'm not averse to you know a couple of like because you've got to you've got to remind people who he is. It's all well and good people like me who are a massive fan want to go in and just hit the ground running, but you, I understand you, you you're rebooting this. You're trying to bring in a new you know fan base and create a franchise. Yeah, that that that's fine. You've got to give a bit of you know foundation work. So that's to be expected. And Neil Marshall, slam dunk when it comes to action tension and banter so these things should work they should work but i'm getting hugely mixed vibes from this trailer and looking online and for people that i trust that seems to be a lot of people feeling the same way so you know they're doing something right and something wrong <laughs> i can't be more specific than that it's just what it is. Guys, have a look at the trailer. Hellboy 2019. It, it was subtitled Rise of the Blood Queen. I'm not sure if it still is. But, you know, April the 12th, next year. Let's hope. Let's keep our, let's keep our horns crossed that this is going to bring the demonic goods to us. With a proper, you know, wink in the devilish eye. You know, and a, a flick of the air, the devilish tail, and a little click of cloven hooves as you jump up in the air, click your heels together. So, folks, let me know what you think about Hellboy. Watch the trailer and get back to us, because you know I'm interested. I'm interested. It can't just be me that's fascinated by Big Red. Look at him. Look at the guy. That is, and by the way, that is a fabulous figure. That absolutely awesome. I really, really want that jacket. I have so many movie character jackets, all authentic. 
somatically worn by the, the, the actor themselves. Oh yes, oh yeah, oh yes. One day, Kurt, when I do a big video on all these things, but uh, I'd love that. I love his BPRD Hellboy big leather tre uh, trench coat. It's fantastic. So, I'm going to leave it there, folks, for now. That's 25 minutes I've just done on a, on a trailer, <laughs> which you guys probably haven't even seen yet. <laughs> so, go watch it. Let me know. And I'm going to get back to you very soon. So, guys, keep it safe. Keep it jovially demonic. And I'm going to see you all later.